Oh, that'd be a good one. All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I posted this picture to Twitter some time ago, and I asked if anyone could identify the blue object on my dash. And so far, nobody was able to. Maybe its uh, resolution in the photo wasn't very good, but this is an increment bore. It is used to get a sample from the center of a tree without cutting the tree down. So this is what uh, dendrochronologists use to measure tree rings. Or at least get a core sample to count the rings. So let me just uh, put it together. You can see there's a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in there. Like this. Try to wash it down with it after every tree just so I don't introduce any sort of cross-contamination, you know, spreading of a disease. I know how to put it together. I've only used it twice. <laughs> so I'm just going to put it in fairly close to the base of the tree. Hopefully I'm not doing anything horribly wrong here. I'm going to kind of aim it towards the center. And I probably want to lift it up actually, just so I'm not hitting the ground. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to try to get the center of the tree. This could go all the way through the tree. I don't think that's really necessary. I'm just going to zoom in on the camera so you can actually see what's going on here. So here we are. You can see it's got a fairly coarse threaded bit on the end, which uh, drills into the tree. This here is Teflon coated, so it slides easily. I'm just going to run it in. <clears throat> I can kind of measure with this to estimate how far into the tree I've gone. So I'm not quite halfway yet. Hopefully, I probably should have checked this sooner. Okay, I can feel. Yeah, we're definitely getting the core. Okay, I'm definitely past halfway. I want to make sure I am though. Okay, yeah. It's going to start risking coming out the other side. So now I'm going to turn it back. Run this in here. The core extractor is just a long, thin piece of metal with some teeth on the end here, so it can grip the wood. Give it a twist. Okay. We have got a core, which I don't. I've only got a few pieces of bark. There we go. There's our core. Awesome. I'll go uh, photograph this under better lighting in a little while. Let's set that aside. I can just run this back out. And the hole should close up on its own. Really, as far as damage to the tree, it's about like cutting a branch off. That's the diameter of this. So it's a fairly small hole, really. That was a boom. <laughs> Yeah, let's take it back apart. Okay, so here's the core. You can see that's where the bark was on the outside of the tree. So the rings are fairly close together here. I think that might be because the core compressed it. Or the tree has grown slower. You can see as I go in, the size of the rings have gotten much fatter and 
And right there is the center of the tree, at least fairly close to the center of the tree. So yeah, there's our core. I'm going to get a magnifying lens and go through and count so we can get a rough number on how old that tree was. So I managed to count 224 annual growth rings in this one little sample of wood here. Obviously that could be a little bit off. You know, it got really hard to count towards the end here. I'm not a dendrochronologist, so I'm, maybe you've counted things I shouldn't have counted. But I'd be fairly confident in saying it's 220 plus or minus like 10 years or so. Still, that means that this tree was alive and growing during the War of 1812. <laughs> I just, that is insane. And it's just a tiny tree. It's only that thick. And I think there are bigger trees on the property. It's crazy to think that a tree that I plant today could be alive hundreds of years in the future. It only motivates me more to plant as many as I can. <laughs> And uh, if you guys want to plant trees as well, uh, there is the Team Trees thing going on still. We're getting fairly close to the 20 million tree goal, and I, I really hope we make it. You know, 20 million trees is not going to make a huge dent in global warming, but there are a lot of other benefits that trees give, and plus, I think this is a good first hurdle to get over. Like, if we can get this goal, maybe we can knock out some others. You know, there's a reason why you pay off your debts smallest to largest. You know, there's a kind of a psychological effect of, you know, having a win early on. Anyway, links will be down in the description. Uh, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Let's see how Team Trees is doing. See, it was like 17 million the last I checked it. Oh, we're almost 19 million. Oh, that's awesome. That's like the home stretch right there. Let's see who's donated the most. Uh, Elon Musk. Ah, oh, that's so cool. A million dollars. <laughs> Shoot, it looks like the millionaire billionaires have made up a significant fraction. Uh, let's, let's see something here. Twenty-four and a half billion. Okay. Let's go into a calculator. So my net worth is about five hundred thousand. Looks about right. Yep. Yeah. Divide that by twenty-four billion. Let's see. Hundreds, thousands. No. Add one. One too many zeros. Hundreds. Thousands, millions, billions, okay. And that's 100,000. <laughs> and then divide, or multiply by a million. It's a million, and... <laughs> so to donate the same proportion of my net worth as Elon Musk, I would have to donate $24. Or twenty dollars and forty cents. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm gonna do it. Maybe ten times the net worth. Ah, uh, seems like such a small amount. There we are. Oh, do I have a different badge than other people? Oh, I should have posted something else. Oh. <laughs>